Hi, my name is Florian from Quality Guru, where I answer your questions and share knowledge about quality management. Today I want to talk about the Ishikawa analysis. The Ishikawa diagram is probably one of the simplest problem-solving tools available, but yet it is very powerful. It was invented by this guy, Mr. Ishikawa, a Japanese who made a lot of contributions to quality management. For example, the quality circles, that means groups of people in an organization studying a certain area and trying to make improvements in a small group. So this was one of the concepts he shaped. And another one were the seven quality tools, what he is very renowned for. And out of these seven quality tools, one is the fishbone diagram or the Ishikawa diagram. So it's also called fishbone diagram because it looks like a fishbone. And some also call it the cause and effect diagram because we have an effect which is my problem and I put it in the head of the fish, I put my problem and then I go basically backwards asking for possible causes because I want to identify the root cause of the problem. So how could you moderate an Ishikawa problem-solving session? So first of all, you would gather a team of cross-functional experts and bring them together. Because why do we need a team? Because one person has only one perspective and several persons have several perspectives. So it's always better to have more perspectives at the issue represented because then you can generate more ideas and can have a higher chance to find the real root cause of the problem. If you are in a company, for example, you would like to have people of different departments also participating in order to represent the different views. So once you have everybody in the room, you can then draw the fishbone basically on the wall or you open it on a computer screen or whatever, you print it out on a paper, but it should be visible to everybody so that you can guide the team now in the analysis. And then you go basically around the fish and filling up the bones. So let's start, for example, let's think about a problem what we could have. Maybe we are working in a restaurant and selling pizzas. And one day the pizza was rejected by the customer because it tastes bad. So the problem is the pizza didn't taste well. The customer let it back, gave it back. And now you can go into the root cause and let's say, why was it like this? Huh? And then you could ask, for example, first of all, materials. Is there any idea, and you can ask this question to the group, related to the material, why this pizza might taste better? Yeah, and the people will say, yes, maybe the ingredients are old. Maybe you use the wrong ingredients. Maybe our supplier ship us bad quality ingredients. So all of these reasons are related to the material. And then you can go on, okay, what about the method? Is there something related to the method? What could be a cause for this problem of the pizza not being good, good enough for the customer, tasting bad? Yes, maybe we mess up the recipe. Could be that we'd use the wrong steps. Maybe it was in the oven for too long, maybe we mix it in the wrong way, the ingredients and so on. So there are a lot of aspects possible regarding to the method. Machine. Yeah, maybe the oven was too hot, was too cold, was damaged. This could be able to, uh, regarding to the machine. Oh, I, my, my, my cutter, my mixer, my blender was broken and I had to use something else and instead of this I used this and leading to a different taste or texture of the product. Measurements. Is there something related to the measurements? Maybe we are weighting our pizza and we're putting the measurement like the how many flour, how much salt, how much water, how, many tom how much tomato sauce. Maybe we measure all this. Maybe we have forgotten to measure because somebody has just put it in a random way and then the whole package of a pizza was not in the right balance or at the right point. So measurement. Maybe the size was too small. Good. Okay, here's the problem is it's a bad taste. So 
probably not the size, it's not relevant, the customer didn't complain about the size. Then you can ask the group about the environment. Could the environment have an impact on the pizza, on the bad taste? Yeah, maybe it's a hot summer day and the shrimp were laying in the sun and then I put them on the pizza and they were already bad. Or maybe it was so hot in the, in the room that somebody forget to, forgot to put something on the pizza. So also the environment can have an impact on our problem, causing that something happens what will then cause our problem. And finally, the people. Could the people who are making the pizza or selling the pizza have something to do with the problem? Yes, maybe they were not trained, they, not, they don't know how to make a pizza, <laughs> they were doing something else, they were thinking of something else, they were distracted because of a personal issue, somebody was replacing another guy because the other person didn't came to work, was the first day on the job, whatever. So there are so many reasons and this is the power of the Ishikawa diagram basically to bring everybody together from the different areas and then asking simple questions in order to generate the flow of ideas and then in the next step when you have the whole fishbone filled with all possible ideas then you go and evaluate validate each one of these possible causes and check if they can be really the root causes so here you can collect data here you can uh, first of all also discuss in the team which one do you think are the most relevant ones and then focus on them prioritize what you want to analyze first and then with data underline your analysis and verify if the hypothesis that means the assumption that this being the cause for this problem is really true or not. The Ishikawa diagrams with five bones, with six bones, with seven bones. This example here has six bones. Everything, the main purpose of this exercise is you can do it with five or six or seven or more bones, as many bones as you want, but the idea is to generate ideas and let the people come up with ideas so that you later have more meat on the bones to find the real root cause for your problem. What do you think about Ishikawa analysis? Do you have any experience to share? Do you use five, six or seven or ten bones? Let me know in the comments and I see you in the next video.